Hello and welcome to all our listeners. You have tuned into What's Stewing, where we bring you closer to the most fascinating personalities in the media world. I'm your host, Abid Hussain, founder CEO of Creative Stew, a creative content company, and today's episode promises nothing short of extraordinary. With us in the studio is a luminary of the radio industry, a man who has not only shaped the airwaves of Malaysia, but also inspired a generation of broadcasters. We are honored to have Daduk Jake Abdullah with us today. An influential figure in radio, Daduk Jake has been at the forefront of innovation and excellence in broadcasting for years. His journey is a testament to passion, dedication, and the relentless pursuit of quality in the world of radio. Beyond his professional accolades, Datuk Jake is also known for his commitment to health and wellness, embodying a lifestyle that many, many aspire to. In today's episode, we'll be exploring Datuk Jake's illustrious career, his insights into the evolving content landscape of radio, broadcasting, and how he balances a high-powered career with a deep focus on health and fitness. So let's get started and extend a warm welcome to Datuk Jaik Abdullah. Thank you so much, Datuk Jaik, for coming in and... and uh, First and foremost, you need to stop calling me Datuk Jaik because you're not the police. I only use Datuk Jaik. <laughs> <laughs> when I have to make some money, but you can call me Jaik. Unless I'm getting paid for this, then... So, <laughs> so uh, let's dive into the first question, is that um, throughout your career in the radio industry, uh, how have you observed the evolution of radio broadcasting in Malaysia, especially with the advent of digital media? Okay, this is actually a three-part question, but I'll try to answer it as fluid as possible. I, I don't look at radio as a separate entity. I, I look at radio as a, as a sort of a platform to deliver that. You know, we, we keep using the word loosely radio, 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 but I coined the word watch radio 10 years ago when I was in Astro because I knew for a fact that digital, social media and all that has to be a part, a proponent of radio. So this is where people forget, um, you know, gone are the days of, you know, my time that was was the start of uh, internet, 1996. You just got in modems, this, that, people were getting into that. And you depended on radio for the charts, you depended on radio for the information. But if you take away that now, so what part does radio play? So it has to be in a symbiotic situation with everybody else, with social media, with TV, with our home, with this, with that. So it has become right now um, integral in the sense that people say, oh, you drive, you listen to radio, but really no, you know. i give you a classic example. We launched KJ on Hot FM, okay, so which was to me the biggest thing that happened apart from the AI radio, AI DJ, which I'll touch about in a bit, okay, so. KJ was the biggest thing that happened in the last probably a year, two years. We got a lot of new eyeballs, I'll say, not ears. Because when I asked people, do you listen to Hot FM? They said, yeah, we were watching it on his reels, on this, on that. So because the measurement system is a perceptual diary, I actually don't care whether you listen to me or not. And that is the true fact, whether it's JFK or Nielsen, you know. So as long as you think you're listening to me, I'm getting the message across, mm -hmm. you know. So to answer your question, how has it transformed? I think it needs to transform a bit more because we still got old boys running, was thinking that, you know, old rules apply and they don't anymore. No. Okay, so yeah. This is a completely different ball game altogether. It is, it is. So, means <clears throat> you really uh, touched uh, on that on that whole, coup which you did with, with KJ, mm -hmm. how did that came into play? Yeah, it, it, <laughs> um, some things I can't speak about, but it was a win-win situation. We, my job has always been to capitalize on these situations. Uh, to me, nobody, like I always say, radio is not as important as coffee and people get upset with me because if you don't drink coffee that day, you probably might be upset, but if you miss your radio show, you won't. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, no? So, yeah. so because of that, we understand we have to disrupt what are people going to be talking about, you know what I mean? So when I saw this, the team, and I can't take credit for this because there's somebody in my team that came out, but you know, we, we, we put 
put this idea together very fast. And just like, I mean, you're the expert in, in, in series and stuff, like we say, how do we actually narrate this story? So I said, okay, and let's do it on social media. Let's invite them on social media. Let's, let's uh, create the, the, you know, the application form. Let's do this. So it had to be because consumers think like that. How did it actually work out? And it's so easy when KJ is such a natural talent. Yeah. It's just brilliant, and he just walked in there, and he, you know, and he, he laughed at himself. It's just so good, you know. So empathy already playing. We got the right emotion, you know. So it was, it was the Malay market. Empathy is going to be a very strong proponent. He says, "Kala undi tapi menang selfie." So that was the line. So we immediately made it into a song. So and he played along really well, and he realized that you know what? Hang on, you know, this is actually working. So. I, I cannot comment on the ulterior motive why he wants to be there, but it's pretty evident. You know what I mean? He, you know, he's not there, but he's he's still relevant. You know, and his his Kloaska job is probably the most listened to thing now. So it's a win-win situation in terms of of leveraging of him. Yes, we have Hot's number one now. We using the, the Nielsen index. You know, uh, and he has come out tops. If you ask people what are they talking about, radio, it's KJ. Yes, you know? yes, you're right. And what's really to me working is he's willing to do the work. And you know, a professional. He's a professional. Yeah. You know, he fronts, he enjoys, he's willing to laugh, he's willing to try new things. Initially it was a bit rigid, but he's like a pro now. So that worked out for us. Yeah. So how did you craft it the content around him? Because he's such a towering personality. It means everybody, and it, it, it was a very thin line between, you know, uh, not getting political about it and not, you know, favoring something and making him into a hero, which he already was in the first place. So how did you guys manage to create th this lovely content, which, uh, which... Okay, so we are not allowed to talk about politics. Oh, yeah. You know, so, yeah. We are, you know, there are certain things that we can't talk about. And it, it was quite a... Thin line also, because initially he, KJ wanted to talk about the serious stuff about this. So he says, mate, we can't do this. You know what I mean? Let's, let's laugh about it. You know, let's talk about what's, uh, what's, what the consumer is talking about. What's, you know, and it worked, you know, so he understood that you can't speak about certain things. You can speak about certain things. So, and that actually works. So, and he's enjoying it like, at the moment. Yeah. You know, um, what have been some of the biggest challenges you've faced in the radio industry in terms of content and how did you overcome them? And and could you share a particular triumphant moment in your career? Mm, okay, so lots. Uh, I have set up stations in India, you know, Mumbai, Delhi. Um, I've, I've set up, you know, award-winning stations in Indonesia also, which is one of the most highly complex markets. Uh, but they all resonate along the same thing, you know. We have to understand what are people talking about. Just because of the sheer dynamics of radio, people drive to work and they drive back. So AM, PM radio becomes important. And that's where we coined the word breakfast radio. Breakfast radio means when people get up, they don't switch on their radio. They start their car and the radio is on at where they left off, which is usually the drive time. Yeah. So because of that, we knew people want information in the morning. You know, they want to know what they left out, the football scores, who's talking about what, you know, this one, you know, like whatever that is relevant. Palestine, this one, what uh, Tun Mahathir said. We understood that. So, we, that has not changed. But what has changed is actually the music. Because now music, while you have to play the best music for choice, but I am not forced to listen to radio for the best music, you know. I can switch on to Spotify, you know, I can Bluetooth this. So we already understand this. So that's why video becomes important for radio now. Immediately we are cutting in all forms, and you're the expert on this, you know, yeah. a bit, you know. We are cutting for different uh, platforms, TikTok. Uh, you know, uh, TikTok uh, is a different application. Uh, Reels on Insta is different. You know, uh, posts is different. Facebook is different. We're doing live. So. Apart from just pure audio, the video proposition suddenly becomes more important. You know, so that has changed. For unfortunately, some people, uh, you know, the old radio hits which I talk about, 
they're still talking about how do you craft the hour. The, the, that's to me now become already secondary. We can argue about this, but it's not, you know. So what comes important is the number one currency now for any uh, TV, especially for radio, is attention. How do I win your attention? Classic example, Coldplay, you know, will be in KL and all that. It's going to be the biggest thing, right? So how do I latch on to that? Do I just speak about that or do I, you know, leverage off that? Malaysia bit Kyrgyzstan. You know, Malaysia will be playing, you know, how do I leverage off that? So immediacy becomes so important for radio. We can't depend on, hang on, we can't depend on, you know, oh, this is the song brought to you by this or that. I can read that anywhere. Hmm. How do I expand this more? How do I, you know, like I read some somewhere that there's this headmaster in Sabah who's living in a school because of this and that. I said, okay, this is great content. How do we leverage this? Do we talk about it or do we build him on this? How do we actually you know, extend further than this. So the three-dimensional approach is needed in radio. Unfortunately, that means allocation of funds and work power now has changed. Mm -hmm. Do you know? I started the first AIDJ in probably the world on Fly FM. Mm -hmm. You know, immediately I used, uh, we, we, we figured, it, figured it out and started the first AIDJ. And people ask me, oh, it's not real and all that. But yeah, it's not real, but it's the whole thing. You know, I can actually extract the voice, put somebody on there, and now suddenly prompt engineering becomes more interesting. Yep. You know, how do I actually do that? It is so con convincing that she sounds better than most of the DJs. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And this is going to happen. We put it on, on Hot FM. Now Indonesia launched their AI DJ just three days ago. You know, so radio, I think, will survive if people stop thinking of it as radio per se. It is just a delivery medium. You know? Correct. Yeah, yeah. And it, it is evolving in every possible way. I mean, as, as Not as fast as we want to. There are still people, you know, the, the old, there are still the old warlords who, or, you know, I was listening to the public radio stations. They're still the same. Yeah. Which is to me shocking because I, and I know I'm not going to get into a lot of trouble because this, I think RTM needs to transform. They got the best transmission in Malaysia. They've got all the best leverage, but why aren't they transforming? You know, to me, that is a paradox. They should be. BBC in, in UK is the number one uh, listened to because yeah. the government understood that they are the voice. You know what I mean? Why should I spend money on others? Yeah. So there's still lots of room for us to grow here. Yeah. yeah. No, having taken me your 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 word on, on on AI is the next question which I was going to ask you. How has the digital transformation affected the the radio industry, the traditional radio industry, in terms of content and what strategies have you employed to keep radio relevant in the digital age? So there's two parts to digital. One is uh, you're talking about uh, playlists and streaming and all that. The thing about radio is, I, in my opinion, I believe that it is going to get more niche in the sense that what's going to happen is more niche uh, um, programming based on localities. In other words, KL suddenly will be one radio station. Mm -hmm. Selangor will be one radio station. Johor will be one radio station. And that we will see that coming probably in the next five years, you know, five to ten years, I feel. Okay. But if you talk about digitalization, it has to transform. Otherwise, you're going to get lost. Now I have more video people than audio people on the radio station. And I spoke about this 10 years ago. I said, this is going to happen. People laughed at me. So, you know, uh, rationalization, how do I build my staff? How do I actually uh, de design a radio station? It all depends on, of course, the revenue, of course, the, the advertiser. And we are building content for both now. You know, like I said, if you ask a 16-year-old, 17-year-old, do you listen to Fly FM? They won't. But do you watch it? Yes. It's a win-win situation for me. You know, so we have to understand that. But the old diehards still believe that people listen to radio in their traditional form. They don't. They really mm -hmm. don't. They just want to be entertained in any, any form. Exactly. So they're extracting the information. There's catch-up. So it means you're catching up via... Instagram stories, Instagram this, your TikToks, your this, you catch up, you know, we cut it now into shorter, you're getting it more, we feed you and all this information. Even if you don't listen to, we're doing the best stuffs and all that. So we have to be engaged digitally 
apart from the 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 FM um, traditional way of disseminating all this one, which is real time. I don't think real time is the way to go. Mm. Real time is real time. People are driving, but eventually, why do I need to listen to you? So what is going to be important is traffic. Mm. Is what is going to be important is if can I give localized traffic? Can I give localized this? But even then. Again, like I said, I can get it on my phone. I can get it. if you put waste, waste tells you where the cop is hiding behind the tree, or you know, there's a jam or that. You know, let's be very honest. Yeah. So even that has been suddenly replaced by technology. So we talk about digitalization; it has to get on board. Yeah, you know, as an influential figure in the radio industry, what is your leadership philosophy, and how do you inspire creativity and innovation in your team? Oh, that's a very tough question. Um, if I had to, if I had to put my finger on the pulse here, and I said this earlier before we started, I said you have to have a year as a consumer, you have to have a year as a listener, which we call. You have to have a year as what are people talking about? Because the truth of the matter is, there are only two or three things people talk about every day. Yesterday was that viral thing about that phone call that happened. The previous day was, you know what I mean? There's only one or two things. That is viraling every day, and that is top of mind because people want to be in the ecosystem of in the know. So, and there's also the FOMO principle. You know, classic example is I'll relate to when Howard Stern interviewed uh, the girl who al allegedly what's her name? Uh, allegedly um, had an affair with uh, Clinton. What's her name? Uh, Monica Lewinsky. Monica Lewinsky. Okay, remember the white dress story. Hmm. While well, everybody was talking about it, he had her with a replica dress. So to me, that is what I'm talking about. How do you actually three-dimensionalize something like this? Mm. So radio has to do stuff like that. Otherwise, it's going to be lost. You know. So how do we actually leverage this? Very simple. We need to be in the face. We need to be first. We need to address issues. Like I can talk to you about it, but everybody is also talking to you about it. I get Twitter information faster than that. Yep. Right, you know, something happens in Palestine. We get the information via Twitter faster. But how do you actually address it? How do you actually make it bigger than that? How do you actually, you know? So that's where creativity comes into play. Yeah, you know. So radio creatives now suddenly have to adapt this. How, do I, how am I going to, you know, take this and make it a different story? How do I bring emotion into it? You know, again, like I said, I don't believe that radio will disappear. But I think it has got to morph. It has got to. It has got to, um, you know, get smarter people, more creative people who are able to uh, adapt with visuals. You know, then it'll. It, otherwise, you know, it's the end of it. What was the other question you asked me? It means uh, your leadership. Okay, philosophy. philosophy. Yeah, to me is is. I've always believed in level five servant leadership, authentic leadership, and all that. There will come a time where. You will only know so much. So, in other words, you have to give leeway for the younger younger generation to actually drive. So that means to actually listening more and speaking less. So it's already coming out. So I think that the barriers right now are because we don't listen enough. And and there are so many uh, ways for us to receive feedback. You know. You can put on your Instagram and you can get 400, 500, you know what I mean? Hey, do you like this or not? Yes or no? Immediately, bang, you know? So I guess we need to listen more and data becomes now very important. You know, I'm such a proponent of data. Um, anything that I do, I test first. Mm -hmm. I do beta test first. If I got a new, KJ was tested first before it went on and we tried it, yes. What was this? I can actually give you percentages. KJ was the single most he came out higher than actually the regular host. So we knew that was happening. So, and this data was given from the consumer because they have so much to say. They want to be part of it. They want to be, so to me, we've got to give them the power. So if you ask me for my style of leadership is, is servant leadership, authentic leadership. However, I actually believe that, that while we're doing this, the people with, with the knowledge like you, a bit, you know what I mean? Uh, or already start to feed the younger generation the tools. You know, that needs to happen. Yeah, yeah. 
you you're creating something for the next generation yes. to take yes. and that's that, that's how the leadership should work and i think and there are so many people who look up to you because they take your Just words because my height <laughs> <laughs> that too and another thing is that that, that you inspire so many people in thank all you, thank you. different ways thank you thank you appreciate it yes where do you see the future of radio uh, heading in malaysia and uh, and globally if you look at for a bigger picture Malaysia is more advanced than than the world in radio. I I just spoke at a conference in Singapore for Marcus Evans and we were talking and they were shocked. I saw the uh, latest ABU uh in in KL they did and they're still talking about trivial stuff that is not interesting for the listener and they're holding on to it because it's a jobs, right? I think it's so advanced. Uh I believe that what's going to happen for radio is a visual proponent, you know. I believe that uh jobs will change i believe that you know like i've ai i've actually got two ai ideas already on fly fm this kind of change prompt engineering is going to come you know wholesale um i'm like you know like mid journey and 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 studio id and and all this you know with chat gpt plus and you know canva and everything that is coming now has got to help radio you know where we can start to take the money and create new jobs you know Let's be very uh transparent here like you know? the DVD seller is no more you know yeah. it was prevalent back in the day and we were you know what i mean it's no more already so we have to understand this changed so i think that there are new jobs going to come i we hired the first prompt technician you know in malaysia probably in, in media you know so because we knew this is going to happen and he says what am i going to do he says no we'll teach you what to do and then you know and said so the next phase for this will be like what china is doing already which is ai influences for radio you know because micro micro sme and sme cannot afford traditional media let's be very clear it's too expensive true barriers to entry ready now what if i can give you 5000 ringgit and you can get it suddenly it's, it's it changes right so you know what i can write a script for you at a fraction of the cost and produce your video in fraction of the cost but a radio station has created a tiktok portal a tiktok channel which is going to drive that so all this is to me is got to be uh, revenue driven you know but with the micro sme and sme in mind you know what if we can suddenly bring in 10 kairul amings or 20 kairul amings what if we can you know uh, create another 15 nilofas that should be the the agenda here because the bumi putra uh, the the malay uh, revenue will continue to grow exponentially yeah? you know you can see it already you know so i guess radio that would be the angle you know to consider this to think from the from the from from the advertiser backwards because radio radio stations before had this so again i will talk about the recording labels in a bit so radio stations before it i am radio i play what you want listen to me it cannot be now i go go to to the the nestles the pepsis of the world and says what's the problem you want me to solve let me work backwards you know now what if i can go to the micro sme and says okay what do you want to solve oh i don't have this i don't have that okay let's solve this but i fuse what you're doing into the program without being brought to you by or yeah. you know so that needs to stop i keep saying that that needs to stop but how do we fuse it so many other ways you know mm. visuals this like we are sitting here now sitting and thinking is how do i put a few different products without even talk, talking about it yeah you know what i mean so that should be the evolution of radio yeah You are the fittest fifty-year-old I know. Fifty-eight. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> How do you integrate your health and wellness routines into your busy professional life? And what tips do you have for others looking to do the same? Hmm. <laughs> Couple of things. Um, I come from a family of my father passed away in his seventies. My grandfather died at sixty-three. So this is. genetics so bad genetics I might add so i have so much i want to do in life so i have to give myself a fighting chance so i was not always like this now i had an epiphany when i was much younger so i told myself look you know what i mean you most people try to undo 20 years of damage in 6 months i need to lose 10 pounds in 6 months it's not going to happen let's be very honest with it you know this is malaysia like your food is so glorious So be mindful have short goals i need to lose 1 kilo if you start with 1 kilo you probably go somewhere uh the reason i be fit is because 
I do martial arts and I lift weights and but you know um, I don't want to be uh, immobile at a later age. I want to carry my own groceries. I want to, you know what I mean. So I guess that's it. And for what I want to do, I got to be physically fit. You know, it's not rocket science. I work out forty-five minutes every other day. You know, I mean, this looks like I've been working on all my life, but it's true. You know, and here's the thing: my son's twenty-three. He's also in broadcast. He studied law, but he's in broadcast. I've never asked him to do all this, huh? and he's fit. His boy lifts weights, he plays football, he runs, he's so he eats well. So I guess what I try to tell people is do the do do one thing first. If you have to like I skip breakfast, I don't eat breakfast, I do intermittent fasting. So I do one thing first. So if you do one thing and then you start to see results, you add another thing. Most people try to do everything from January 1st. <laughs> <laughs> you see a lot of people yeah, yeah, you know, I, I was smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. Yeah. So uh, the cigarette was a different story because I quit just like that. You know, um, I went and did my blood work and it was bad. And I said, you know what? I ain't going down like that. Mati tapa kalau sangkut. You know, you're stuck when there's a problem. So, but if you want to lose weight, just do it slowly. Do it slowly. If you want to uh, exercise, if you have never exercised, if you're walking 2,000 steps a day, walk 3,000 steps a day. You know, gradually do that. The problem is peer pressure. You're reading too much nonsense on the net, and you're you know watching Instagram. Nobody puts bad stuff on Instagram, like Please, lah. You know what I mean? Nobody puts puts their good stuff. So start slowly, and I'll tell you why that I take this approach. A uh, few people that I was close to me passed away. You know, um, mental health. You know, a close friend of mine um, committed suicide during COVID. Two of them, actually. One's from a very famous Filipino band called Slapshot, Jame. Jame Garcia passed away. And Cameron Plant, who used to work with me in Astro, he's perfectly normal, hung himself. Mental health, okay? So this is all hormonal, this is all, you know. Then there were two people who actually had a heart attack at 43, 50 years old. Dying is not the issue, but I actually believe that there's so much I want to do, right? So. I got to be in primal help for that. I mean, you know, to me also, this is inshallah, you know what I mean? God willing, I, I managed to listen. But otherwise, I have to give myself a fighting chance. So my best advice to you, if you are watching this, hearing this, and you want to start, don't wait for it for a Monday or for a Friday or for first, you know what I mean? Do tomorrow, just say, you know what? Tomorrow I'm not going to have breakfast. It's going to be hard the first day. After three days, should be fine, you know. I mean, so and for for those of you who who might not might not know, no, I'm Muslim. I, I fast thirty days, and I work out during while I'm fasting. People ask me how I do it. I said, why not? I see people doing construction work with that, and I will train while I'm fasting. You know, so because that's the best benefits of it. Yeah. But don't be like Malaysian lah. After buka puasa, go for buffet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do, done. Done. Don't do that. Don't do that. You picked up a very good topic on the, on the mental health part of it. Ro uh, the radio industry has been a very, I mean, it's a very stressful. Uh, you know, like everything. Yeah, like, like everything. Yeah. How do you, and how do you train your team to 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 ma I mean, balance their mental health while they are working in such a stressful environment? Uh, I can't say that I'm very actively involved now, but but usually like I. People reach me all the time. Uh, two is uh, stress and anxiety is your ability to handle cope. It's a coping mechanism. My coping mechanism is going to the gym. You know what I mean? When you're squatting 300 pounds, I don't think you've got time to think about stress. Like you've got to get, get it up. See? But it's also it's hormonal. A lot of people don't understand this. You know, there's, uh, I can get very scientific about it, but I, I try not to. So adrenaline and cortisol, uh, fight or flight hormones. Yeah. When you stress this, come up, you know what I mean? So if you know you're nicely high strung, then you need antagonists. So to me, it's like when I go to the gym, I feel happy because I got endorphins. I got this. So I yearn for it, you know? So there are other things you can do, you know what I mean? Prayer is a very strong thing, you know? You, you know, pray five times a day or whatever religion you are, you know, you can talking to somebody is really important also a lot of people don't understand this that you know therapy doesn't mean you're going sitting and talking to a shrink 
like I told you just now, hey, reach out to me anytime. You know, you can mm. talk to me. So I'm usually open to that. Uh, so we advocate that in the office. There's some issues, but we can't. Most some people are just built in such a way that they cannot disclose information. Yeah. You know, they are closed up. And I, through experience, I've you know the guy who passed away was my close friend, most resilient person I know. I spoke to him two days before he passed away, and he was normal. You know, it takes a lot to hang yourself. So. Um, again, if you're hearing this, you're reaching out. If you need to reach me, reach me. I will talk to you. you know, if you tell me, hey, Jack, I'm going through this, I will talk to you. But I guess talk to somebody. It's not the end of the world. It's just, it's just an issue. Everything can be solved, you know. So this is where I'm very stoic in my ways. I don't worry about things I cannot control. I used to. If I can't control it, why am I worrying about it? Yep. It takes a lot out of me, you know what I mean? So I've learned to slowly grasp this. Um, writing helps me. I, I, I write a lot, you know what I mean? So I journal a lot. So that really helps me. Sometimes you can't talk to somebody, write it down. As, as stupid as it may seem, write it down. So, yeah. So I mean, Those are the learnings which I think uh, you uh, have put it in your, in your new book, which you're writing yes. right now. Yes. How those experiences and how that, you know, uh, has, has uh, made you uh, write this book? And what all means uh, you have shared that in, uh, from your experience into that. Okay, uh, it was just a jest, actually. Uh, I used to, <laughs> I used to hashtag Book of Jake because uh, it sounded biblical at that time. <laughs> book of so, Eli, yeah. Book of Jake. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, actually, it, got, it came from the you know, big yeah. Denzel fan also. So, but I realized I got so many stories to tell. I, I just, you know, I come from a from a very humble uh, background. My father was uh, just government stuff. And I have so many stories to tell. And I said, it'll be a shame if I don't share this because there's stories of, of hope, the stories of empathy, the stories of uh, plight, the stories of... So I started to write down all these parts of my life. It's not an autobiography, it's not. It's just about, it's a story about KJ, you know. Chapter 12 is a story called uh, John the Legend. It's a, uh, John, a guy who was 172 pounds. I trained and lost half his weight. He's 85 kilos now. Oh. And I saw how he has changed, you know. It's about that. The story about KJ on uh, a reference to B Rabbit from 8 Mile, how he's laughing about himself and, you know. Mm. So it's just different parts of it. Uh, Book of Jake is out 19 December. So yeah, if you need to, uh, I hope you pick up the book. I'm self-publishing it. Uh, uh, proceeds from the book goes to my sister whose uh, husband uh, is uh, down with cancer so I'm helping them out and you know it's, if you can do good you do good like, you know yeah. and she's been a big inspiration to me also uh, www.bookofjake.my so you can buy the book straight there yeah Lovely. Yeah, yeah no but definitely with this so much of information there's so much of learning which you have accumulated and put mm. into one book I'm still learning man and this no, book no. of Jake part two is already <laughs> being written yeah no we look forward to the book, book, mm. book of Jake first mm -hmm. uh, the parting uh, you know question from you is like uh, this year, what are all the best content pieces you've watched on, on TV or on oh, the film? Okay. I keep going back. Hey, I, I really like uh, the, the cover girl that I told you that I'll give you my, my honest feedback to. I thought it was shot really well. But this is, this is your, you, you know, you do this really well. But I am sort of a... I like what India is doing to its content. Um, I used to detest watching Hindi movies and this, but what's coming out is social issues on Indian um, uh, dramas and stuff like that. And I thought that was fascinating. I wish Malaysia will start to take on this, you know, and it's just amazing the amount of... Um, we, can, we can say what we want about Prime or, or Netflix, but they're giving chance for local people to actually prep stuff. And your stuff is on Prime, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, so it's just really good. I wish Malaysia will touch a bit more on social issues. There was one, uh, the Indonesia is coming out a lot. Yeah. Um, apart from just seeing Korean dramas, I think this will actually allow us to learn because we learn through stories, you know, yeah. and... Cinema, and there are so many stories so to be told. So many, so many stories to be told. It's just amazing. I used to look out for, you know, like stuff like the killing and, you know, and stuff like that. Good cinematic, this one, but... I just realized the story and I, I, saw, I saw one, I don't know who was, I think you would know, Padman. Yeah, Padman was... Well, yeah, a uh, guy, you know what I mean? And then there's one about, sorry, I don't mean to seem, sound lewd, but there's this guy about how the toilet in the Brahmin family, yeah. you know what I mean? It was just amazing. And it's, it's a social and, commentary. Yeah, it's education. And then there's a lot about Indian politics and, you know, and 
the Bombay Diaries and yeah. you know so but the government needs to let us tell the story and I think they will eventually you know so slowly they are beginning to change so I guess those are the things that I'm seeing in terms of movies I I don't know I'm a big fan of drama so I haven't seen much yet I this year I told myself sorry I told myself that I don't want to watch so much movies I got to finish my book it's done I love the Oppenheimer I thought I'm going to fall asleep but it was just brilliant really didn't let you sleep even it was, wink. it was just brilliant uh that's the only movie I saw this year apart from that it's just all the short stuff all this um series you know why have you been watching oh I've been watching a lot of stuff means uh Uh, what would you recommend for me to watch? I want you to watch The Bear. Okay. It's on Disney Hotstar. Okay. Two seasons. It's about uh, a chef. Oh, okay. And, okay. And it it gets as real as it can. Okay. So that and another one which I would love to love you to watch is uh, The Downfall of the House of Usher on Netflix. I've seen it. I thought it was yeah, really grim and very very nicely done. I tried to watch Jailer, but I couldn't. I attempted three times and I couldn't. I'm so sorry, Rajini Gan. You know, I love you, but <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> and and the new Shah Rukh Khan movies, the, the, the Jawan, is Jawan it? and Pathan. It's good. It pretty good means they have taken the whole uh, South Asian, uh, South Indian uh, whole uh, circus and mm. put it with with the Shah Rukh, and it worked perfectly fine. Brilliant. 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 Uh, over the top, obviously. Uh, but it looked highly entertaining. So I think we have we have done with the interview. Thank you so much. Yeah, happy to be here. Good yeah, to see you. So happy to see you. Well, happy for a long time. Is, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But thanks a lot for taking time. No problem. Really, really here. appreciate your you coming here and yeah. and, and meeting. And uh, hope we can do this again sometime. Definitely, definitely. And thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you, buddy.